the uh, fourth day of the sixth special session of the 20th Congress will now come to order. May we all rise for a moment of uh, silent prayer. Senator Alec, Senator Aritos, Senator Vigier, Senator Cullen, Floor Leader Harper, Senator Conman, Vice Speaker Moses, Senator Ned, Senator Penuelo, hey, Senator Perman, hey. Senator Romulo, Senator Rosmao, Senator Wally, Speaker Simna. Yes. Mr. Speaker, 12 members are present. We have a quorum this morning to transact uh, business. Next item is reading of the journal. Uh, Floor Leader Harbor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and good morning to you and all honorable members, as well as our staffs and all those who are observing from the gallery and I want to say my special welcome and recognition to all the students from one of the schools in Metalenium and let me say Casileria Mango. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I move that we dispense with the reading of the journal. Second. Let's move and second that we dispense with the reading of the journal. Those in favor of that motion say yes. All boys, nay. Motion carried. We now dispense with the reading of the journal. Next item, Chief Clerk. Mr. Speaker, item number five, presidential communications. When receipt of numbers 20-357 through 20-364. Okay, assign those, Chief Clerk. Next item. Item six, FSM Supreme Court communications. None, Mr. Speaker. Continue. Item seven, member communications, none. Item eight, departmental communications, there are also none. Item nine, agency or governmental authority communications, none, Mr. Speaker. Item 10, state communications, none. Item 11, state Supreme Court communications, none. Item 12, municipal or town communications, also none. And for item 13, foreign government communications, we have one, and it's number 20-67. Okay, I signed that, that Jeff Burke. Okay, order of the day. Item 14, standing county reports. First report. Mr. Speaker, the first report, it's a standing committee report number 20-102 on functional bill number 20-158 from your Committee on Health and Social Affairs for adoption. Short recess, subject to call of the chair. Congress is back in session. Chairman Berman, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you very much. Good morning to you, vice members, and all that are observing our session this morning. Mr. Speaker, so move for its adoption, CB, uh, C, SCR 20-102, so move. And smooth and seconded that Congress adopts standing committee report number 20 102. Discussion. Speaker. Chairman Byrne. Yeah, thank you, Speaker. <clears throat> you know, when it comes to um, Social Security, it's, it's a topic or issue that is not very popular among us. But basically, at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is help our senior citizens people who retired and to add on a little bit of fund to to increase a little bit of the um, the end of the month earnings but the uh, the new amendments covered nine nine amendments and 
Um, I think uh, my legal, our legal staff uh, made a breakdown all, on all the uh, amendments and gave it to put it in the inbox of every members. But I'll, if you let me just go through it, just one, one of the main, um, there's nine of them, so number one will be the employees of the, in the FSM NKH in covered employment will have to pay the FSM Social Security contribu contributions, whether or not they contribute to another, uh, another country's Social Security or pension scheme. This will close the current cap in contribution collection that will allow FSM to collect from employees on vessels which are flagged under FSM law. The FSM Social Security Administration has commended that this will greatly improve the contribution to the program. Number two, amendment is also made to remove the maximum quarterly amount wages. Therefore, the highest wage earners will pay Social Security contribution on their entire earnings. The attachment or the garnishment of Social Security benefits is usually not allowed. However, by the proposed amendment, the program could recoup contributions that were outstanding to the program. This provision would almost exclusively apply to those who are self-employed and paying the employer share to the program. Number four, the law would be amended to allow the program to collect attorney fees and costs where a lawsuit is deemed to have been filed in a bad faith. An adopted dependent child of beneficiary shall be presumed to satisfy the dependency requirement if the employee has been contributing to the majority of the child's support. Number six is maximum monthly benefit for the primary recipient is capped at $1,000 per month. Number seven, a second benefit option will be offered to the individuals at age 60. An individual would be able to receive 70% of the entitled benefit payment for their whole retirement without an earning test. This will benefit those working after the age of 65 and give some additional funding for those 60 to 64. The Social Security Administration stated that this will be a very beneficial to the program in the long run or more individuals choose this option and the program pay fewer beneficiaries the 100% after 65. Number eight, beneficiaries will be required to fill out an el eligibility questionnaire periodically provided the program to determine if benefits should contribute for the individual. And last but not least, beneficiaries will also be required to fill out a questionnaire for all benefits claimed under the program. These are the nine amendments given to us by our Social Security Administration and asking us for our approval. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, Chairman, so what, what, what's wrong, uh, Chairman Figure? Those are really nice things. Speaker. I mean, well, thank you, Mr. Uh, Go ahead, Chairman Figure. And, uh, Speaker. I, uh, and that's the very uh, basis of my uh, wanting to delay and understand uh, the, uh, the, what the bill is going to uh, uh, do. First, the, there has not been any, as I said yesterday, any professional assessment in this uh, area, actuarial assessment, on the impact of these nine amendments. We seem to be relying on the fishing uh, industry, which has no definite future of the, the industry. It may go down. Uh, in the future and then thereby affect the, the uh, sustainability of the program. And then moving around the, the 70 percent uh, benefits, uh, still in my uh, so layman's, uh, I don't know how to add and subtract, I'm very concerned on the uh, sustainability of the, the program. And, uh, and and these are the things that I need to make myself and make sure that I do the right, uh, uh, make the right decision on behalf of the people and maybe including me. I'm heading that way uh, to make sure that there's a, a little income and then keeping and capping the the benefits to one thousand. I need to know the rationale because it seems to me that we may be. 
uh, infringing in, on uh, rights of other individuals. Therefore, therefore, we are violating our constitutional rights or impeding other people's uh, constitutional rights to something that they own. So these are the things, and I, as I said, I'm willing to let the report go, but I need to seek some other advice since we have not received anything uh, from professional advice from the administration of the program other than what they wish to see that may also benefit the administration of the program and not uh, uh, a really concern of the beneficiaries of the program who has been putting in a lot of money, the meager resources that they earn put in the program. This is where I'm coming from. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chairman Fakir. That's uh, very uh, important. Uh, uh, Chairman Romano. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, I stand to be corrected, and I wish to seek uh, on one of the uh, the, the main uh, points that uh, Chairman Perman mentioned about the uh, the flag, the ships that are registered or flag under our flags. I thought uh, FSM doesn't allow a foreign vessel to register under our flags. And I wish to get a clearance on what a ship or vessels is he referring to that are registered on, under our flags. Thank you. Okay, so what kind of vessels, uh, German Berman? <clears throat> well, Speaker, uh, you know, this, uh, all these amendments been uh, coming through Congress for the past two years, and I believe our both from AG's office and our legal staffs, and everybody worked on it to make sure that we abide by the law. And, um, and I'm sorry, the questions coming from Chairman Robson, I thought there are ships under that we have carries have some flag that so just in case there's ship that carries our flag they will go after for the social security that's basically it okay does that uh, help uh, German uh, and yeah, yeah. It, it does but I just thought maybe I need to look in uh, to and see to educate myself but I thought uh, the FSM doesn't allow to register vessels, foreign vessels under our flag. It's FSM is one of the countries in the world that doesn't allow. Thank you. Well, uh, of course, we have our own vessels that, uh, uh, and there are those fishing vessels that are licensed to fish in our uh, waters who, you know, use uh, our citizens for, uh, like, uh, observers and those kind. I think that's what it's referring to. Yeah, but they're licensed, but not registered to, so they're not, uh, again, they, they would not uh, be required to pay a social security tax if they're not FSM vessels. Thank well, you. Yeah, we'll, we'll look into that, and I think the idea from uh, German Fatir is a good one. We adopt the report and we defer the appeal, if that's uh, going to help. Okay? Is that okay with you, uh, German Permit? So when we come back, we'll, I mean, when... We vote on the report, adopt it, and then defer the appeal when it comes to it. Okay? Mr. Speaker. Uh, General Mullen, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my concern regarding this bill is that last time we had meeting with the uh, Social Security, uh, the information was that there's about five million uncollected. So I would hope that this bill would also include enforcement in collecting rather than just amending. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, uh, German. Well, a uh, very legitimate uh, concern. Uh, how, how do we address that, uh, German Berman? Is it somewhere in this bill or you want a new bill to, or amendments to address? Well, uh, um, Mr. Speaker, thank you. I'm glad that everybody's raising these issues when it comes to reporting. So. That's one reason that we should defer it to January, so we make sure that all the concerns that raised by members will be at addressed. Thank you, Speaker. Okay, thank you. So, uh, any further discussion? Speaker, uh, figure. I, uh, and if uh, 
the bill is stiffer, I also, in line with the question or concern raised by uh, my uh, friend uh, on my immediate uh, left, the, about several, uh, I would say about five years ago, I was told the program is in deficit, was in deficit of 300 plus million dollars. I also want to hear from the program how they uh, what the plan is to uh, balance that deficit. I know that we every year we uh, pump in about one to two million dollars into the program, and uh, they also want to borrow ten million dollars. So I we need to uh, clear this. But I think uh, if we are careful in reviewing, as I said, most of these things are coming from the administration of the program as to their liking, not necessarily the best, uh, because we have not really received any actual professional assessment of how we can service the program. So I, I just want to raise this on record so that uh, in January, I can be uh, satisfied with uh, my uh, little understanding. Speaker, may I just ask? Thank you, uh, Chairman Figure. The unfunded liability, that is true. It is a huge uh, uh, problem with our uh, Social Security, just like any other uh, welfare system, I mean, uh, social uh, security system in the world. In fact, ours was about 300 some million. And as far as I know, that has dropped because of all the uh, reforms we've done with our social security system. And it is uh, actually really uh, uh, getting uh, lower than the over 300 million uh, we used to have uh, 10 years ago. Uh, yeah, yes, Premier? Speaker, I think you're right on that. Um, for, if you remember, on the 19th Congress, we subsidized social security $2 million. This year we did another $1 million, just to make sure that I think the $10 million raised by Chairman Ways of Means, they wanted to actually increase their, their trust fund so, so they can uh, slowly uh, stop asking Congress for, uh, to, for subsidy. So yes, um, like I said, uh, all the concerns that have been raised is fully noted and move to the previous question, Mr. Speaker. Okay, uh, there's no objection. Uh, debate is closed, so let's vote. Those in favor of the adoption of Standing Committee Report number 20-102, say yes. Yes. Was no. Motion carried. The Standing Committee Report number 20-102 is adopted by Congress. Next report, Chief Rick. Point of privilege, Mr. Speaker. Uh, state your point, uh, Florida driver. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As uh, the floor leader of this Congress, I really want to uh, introduce our students who are observing our session this morning. But since I don't have a uh, full tongue of a bon a pen, uh, I will ask uh, maybe the Senator at large from Pompey to do the introduction now, and I yield the floor to him. Thank you, Speaker. Okay, the floor is yielded to uh, Chairman Panuelo. Proceed, Chairman Panuelo. Uh, speaker, uh, thank you. Good morning to you and good morning to all members uh, here in the chamber. And I also uh, uh, want to say Casalelia and good morning to all of those who are observing from the gallery. Uh, speaker, this morning we are very fortunate, as you know. Uh, I thank the good uh, floor leader for yielding the floor to me. As a chairman of the Bombay delegation and as a member of Congress, uh, Speaker, kindly allow me to, uh, on our behalf, introduce uh, uh, the uh, students. And uh, may not be, we may not have the time to do uh, individually, but uh, I want, on our behalf, to uh, uh, welcome uh, the freshman students. I understand there are 97 of them, plus their chaperones and teachers who uh, uh, have escorted them uh, today to the chamber. Uh, we're fortunate to have these students from Metalinium High School. Uh, uh, several days ago, uh, uh, the uh, uh, person in charge of uh, social studies, uh, chairman of Department of Social Studies, Kenneth Paulus, wrote to you uh, a speaker to ask that these students appear before Congress to observe our session. 
uh, we welcome them. Uh, it's part of their uh, civics and uh, economics uh, class. And uh, I believe uh, if uh, our public information office has not uh, given them the orientation, they will do that after the session. Uh, and that can be uh, given to them as part of their uh, learning. Uh, before I continue, let us uh, please give our students and the chaperones and teachers a very big round of applause to welcome them into the chamber of the FSM Congress. Can I ask that we do that now? Thank you, uh, Speaker. Uh, speaker, as you know, uh, education is uh, very fundamental uh, to the development and growth of uh, our nation. Uh, human resources is uh, the, the most important resource and we are witnessing a, a group of students who are here who will be uh, uh, leaders of tomorrow, uh, who will be uh, occupying many important positions in the different sectors in our country, especially in Tom Bay. Uh, we want to, on behalf of Congress, uh, encourage uh, every one of you to uh, make education your priority. Uh, uh, to do your best and to excel. Uh, I wish that our uh, uh, chairman of uh, education is here because he will uh, give much more uh, uh, inspirational uh, message to our students uh, here. But uh, just so you students and the teachers who are here uh, know uh, this Congress uh, is the 20th Congress. Uh, you know that there are 14 members uh, that comprise of this uh, FSM Congress, uh, six members from Chuk, four members from uh, Ponbe, and two each from Koshai and, uh, and Yap. And uh, this uh, Congress has uh, uh, committees that deals with education. We have Committee on Education, uh, Ways and Means Committee that deals with uh, money, uh, R&D committee that deals with our resources and development of our country. The TCNI committee deals with transportation and infrastructure. And uh, you may have learned there's a JNGO committee which deals, deals with our judiciary and governmental uh, operations. And then health and social affairs committee. We have a special committee on uh, climate change because you know you're learning a lot about climate change, uh, you students. And then another committee that deals with uh, foreign nations, our relations with external affairs, and uh, we have a committee on external affairs. So, Speaker, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, just uh, read out the teachers and uh, uh, staff that have accompanied the students here, and we'll give them a round of recognition in the interest of time. The I will, I'm not sure if the principal is here, but I will also recognize the principal of high school, Metalinium High School, and read down the rest of the teachers who accompanied the students. We have uh, Mr. Amover Penias, who is the principal of Metalinium High School, uh, Kenneth Paulus, who is the chairperson of Department of Social Affairs, Laura Shed, or Laura Shed, social study uh, specialist. Christopher Petrick, who's a teaching, te uh, teaching staff. Uh, Rhonda Chani, teacher. Joanna Etze, uh, teacher. Joster Benias, who's a bus driver. Retina Alter, Ret Retina Alter, bus driver. Merlise SEL, the teacher. Uh, Chaylene Ringland, who's an IEB teacher. And James Paul, a uh, bus driver. Speaker, let's give them, and again, uh, to all of the students, uh, a big round of applause for uh, visiting us. And I, I think, uh, uh, Speaker, they, uh, when we started this morning, uh, they got a sense of how discussions are. And the bill that uh, is before Congress right now is, uh, is a, a report on the uh, social security program that we have in the FSM, and you got to uh, hear some of the uh, discussions that are happening. So, Speaker, uh, we're very fortunate to have these uh, students and teachers observing, and we wish them uh, all the best in their program, that they can learn more about the legislative branch, uh, the executive branch, and the uh, judiciary branch. We wish you all the best, and uh, 
Good luck in your education. Kalangan na teacher, speaker. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman uh, Banuelo. Uh, I don't know how many have reached 18 years old, but I think you can. Uh, yeah, and Senator Ned is smiling. Yes, he is. Uh, speaker. And, uh, speaker. Yes, uh, I will allow you, Senator Ned, to go first. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it's, it's only appropriate that I join Chairman Banuelo in welcoming these uh, visitors considering the important fact that election is around the corner. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Senator Ned. Uh, it's uh, well said. Chairman uh, Romulo, you want to... Uh, they're not, they're not from Northwest region of truth. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can. Th thank you, Speaker. And again, good morning to you all. And I would also associate myself with the good uh, Vice Chairman uh, Ned on the last statement that the election is around the corner. And I want to make sure that I don't leave out any of my constituents who is observing our uh, uh, session this morning. And I beg the indulgence of the Congress to recognize a hard-working lady who is working for the national government, the Department of DCNI, who is in the gallery this morning by giving her a round of applause. And her name is Stella Louis. Yeah, she asked me for Pertium, not you. I don't know why. Uh, OK, any other point of privilege, uh, Chairman Figure? The you, Mr. Speaker. I just want to join the members of Panabet delegation and others who have uh, welcomed the students to our chamber. I think it's very important that they are here to learn how we do things. And most especially, I'm very proud of them because I know they will be the future leaders of this nation. It's not because I know that none of them is going to vote for me, and I, that's okay. Uh, so I, I just want to say that, uh, and I hope that they continue to learn uh, our history. In since I heard that there, they have some, uh, some of them are taking civic classes. Because uh, I have uh, uh, traveled throughout the FSM at times uh, and speaking to high school students at time I ask who the first president of the FSM, some of them didn't know. I even asked the current president of the FSM, they said they didn't know the answer. So I, I hope that someday the history of the FSM is, becomes part of the curriculum throughout the nation so that they can appreciate what we are and who we are. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chairman Fikir. That's uh, very uh, important. And uh, I'm sure the teachers, the principal, uh, heard you. They hear what you just said. I hope they will uh, accommodate that kind of That is important. The history of our uh, young nation is something that we must uh, have our children you know, be well first in. Okay, any other uh, point of privilege? If none, uh, next report, Chief Clerk. Mr. Speaker, we have an awaiting list number 20-46. Okay, short recess, subject to go off the chair. Congress is back in session. Chairman Romulo, you have to report. Motion to withdraw the state report on today's agenda. Move and seconded that uh, Standing Committee Report number 20-103 be uh, placed on the Standing Committee Report calendar for action. Those in favor of that motion say yes. Opposed no. Motion carried. Let the record reflect that the road and rules are still suspe are suspended up to this point. Okay, uh, now that it's placed, uh, Chief Clerk, what is it about? Yeah, Mr. Speaker, standing committee report number 20-103. It's on 
Act number 20-139 uh, about the override of a fetal uh, for adoption. Mr. Speaker. Okay. Uh, make motion for adoption of the report. Motion to adopt the said report. It's moved and seconded that uh, Congress adopt standing on the report number 20-103. Discussion. Any discussion? Speaker. Yes, for Leader Harbor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, first of all, I'd like to make an apology as I have never had the chance to read the uh, uh, message on the uh, FIDO, and therefore I would like to uh, ask if someone can enlighten me as to the uh, reason for the FIDO. Chairman Romolo, enlighten uh, our good floor leader. Uh, thank you, uh, Speaker and uh, floor leader. The, the message, to my understanding, after re reading the, the message on the FIDO was basically the, uh, the impact on the government, how much it would uh, cost, and uh, the need uh, more time to, to review and do an audit on the, the cost uh, the, of uh, this, uh, with the, this uh, bill. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Continue, uh, Florida. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. It's just unfortunate that uh, this is uh, uh, what second reading or uh, the vote will be applied as uh, it is on second reading. Uh, if it were first reading, I, I would vote against it for the reason. Mr. Speaker. Okay, thank you, uh, Florida Harbor. Uh, Speaker. Uh, Speaker Moses. Yeah, thank you, Speaker. <clears throat> Good morning to you, members, and those observing the gallery. The as I read the uh, veto message, the president has some concerns with the cost of uh, the impact that it would have on this government. But then again, he's asking us to reconsider uh, or consider not overriding the veto because there is currently an audit going on on the on the issue itself with regards to housing so i am in support of the bill however uh, i think it would be nice to respect the president's uh, veto message that there is an audit and uh, that we consider the bill again once the audit is uh, finished and there are findings or no findings uh, in the audit. So that's my input on the issue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Vice Speaker Moses. Uh, while the audit is going on, the President issued a proposed amendment to the regulations to uh, put in a $700 across the board. So I don't know what he's talking about us waiting when he's doing uh, exactly the opposite. Uh, Chairman Romulo. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And yes, uh, I do agree with you with what information that we get uh, during the hearing that, uh, that the cost would not much come as you indicated, President had put aside 700. The cost that we were given, it's going to be less than 700 to accommodate this uh, housing if this housing bill passed. So my concern is that they indicated to us that some of this, if this bill passes, it's not going to be that much of employees who would be on the, uh, the housing or will be eligible for the, the housing because most of these, the regulations remain, but it will just address some issues with, uh, for example, the housing now policies that are, they're following. They only apply, the only employees who are eligible that are hired here but from other state, if they are students from COM and applied and have a job here in Ponbe or elsewhere, as long as they are students of CON. But the rest, if they come here 
on their own to come and find a job, then they are, they are not eligible. And this bill will address that, uh, as they indicated to us in the uh, hearing. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chairman Narumalo. Any further discussion? Short reasons. Short, Short reasons, subject to call the chair. Continue discussion. Congress is back in session. Uh, we're still on discussion of the report 20-103. Any further discussion? Yes, uh, Chairman Wally. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, point of information. There's State your a, point. Thank you. There's a signature with reservation here. May I ask for a clarification on the uh, reservation, please? Well, uh, you're sitting next to him. Uh, why don't you just ask him? Mm. Uh, speaker, I, I guess I don't have to uh, reply to his uh, question, but uh, I, I just want to uh, raise my concern on the veto, which is pretty much uh, similar to Vice uh, Speaker's uh, uh, concern. I think at times uh, we go ahead and do things uh, without uh, really uh, a good assessment. Um, I, I, and I have a, a, a concern uh, with, uh, with this bill, so I, and I'm one of those, I, I need a little time to sleep over it. I know it will affect a lot of my uh, constituents. But it's not that because they will be benefiting from it. I'm looking at the overall interests of the nation as far as the uh, cost. And I hope that uh, we don't uh, encourage COM students to apply for a job and stay here. And I, I want them to go on and further their education. Uh, she, this is where I'm coming from. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman uh, Fagir. Yeah, well said. Uh, that's, uh, but as I mentioned, maybe we can uh, do the report and then the act itself. We uh, decide what to do on it tomorrow. Okay. Uh, Panuelo, you have the floor. Speaker, I don't want to belabor the issue more than uh, necessary, uh, but. Uh, Bombay delegation's position is as uh, uh, been said by Vice Speaker, the message of the veto, and we hope that we can narrow the, uh, the differences there and give more time. I think we, while the report is uh, good and it's the intention is to uh, make the housing allowance uh, more fair, uh, we believe that there's still uh, room to look at it further and give it time to uh, uh, have the executive and uh, legislative branch uh, work together on it. But if it's going to be deferred till tomorrow, uh, uh, Bombay delegation's uh, vote will be uh, uh, not to uh, uh, go in favor of override. That, it, that means no, but uh, uh, we're open to uh, hearing more discussions on it. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Panuelo, for your uh, frank uh, Statement that's that's healthy. That's good. Any other discussion? Speaker, uh, Florida Harbor. Uh, nothing important, uh, Mr. Speaker. I just want to say that this morning when I came to our office, I was hearing lots of laughter and all that, and uh, I was thinking that the same good mood yesterday is still maintained, uh, but it looks like it's a different mood today. <laughs> uh, speaker, it's still good mood. We're we're trying to to give more room to uh, improve uh, if there's uh, time to do that. So, Lord okay. Leader, I assure you, the mood is still good. Thank speaker, you, uh, <coughs> okay, thank you. If there is no speaker, who's that? Uh, Chairman Ramalo, you have the last word. Thank you. Uh, it uh, still bothers me when we talk about the impact on the funding and the expenses of the government. And it seems to me that we don't really care much about the service that is rendered by these hard-working employees who have left their families, states, to come and render their service 
to this very own government. These are technical people who have provided services, but yet we still worry about how much we will, the government will cost. While we have appropriated money for other programs. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman Ramalo. Uh, very uh, uh, well said. And uh, any further discussion? Speaker. Vice I Speaker Moses. the previous question. Small for okay. the previous question. If no further discussion, uh, there's no objection. Discussion is closed. So let's vote on the motion. Those in favor of the adoption of stand income the report number 20-103 say yes. Opposed nay. Motion carried. Stand income the report number 20-103 is adopted by Congress. Next report. Mr. Speaker, we still have the awaiting list number 20-46. Short recess of the chair. We still have to add a waiting list, uh, but we'll uh, come back to it when, when the report, uh, another report arrives. Uh, next item, Tripler. Item number 15, Mr. Speaker, special committee reports. There are none. Next item. Item 16, assignment of measures and communications. We have a referral or assignment sheet number 20-93. Okay. Members, chairman and members, take uh, note of take note of that uh, for your planning purposes. Next item. Item 17 and finished business. None, Mr. Speaker. Okay. Bill calendar. First Sorry, bill. <coughs> Sorry, Mr. Speaker. Short recess. Subject to go out the chair. Congress back in session, uh, first bill. Deferred. Yes, Mr. Speaker, we have CB number 20-158 for first reading from your Committee on Health and Social Affairs. C CB number 20-158 is a bill for an act to amend section 603, 604, 607, 708, 801, 803, 804, and 806 of Title 53 of the Code of the Federated States of Micronesia as annotated to clarify, define, and revise the administration, contribution collections, and benefits of the Federated States of Micronesia, Social Security, and for other purposes. Okay, German, uh, German. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Motion to defer action on the said bill to our next regular session. Okay, it's moved and seconded that the uh, said bill be deferred to the next session of Congress. Those in favor of that motion say yes. Opposed nay. Motion carried. Said bill is deferred to the next session of Congress. Regular session of Congress. Okay, next uh, bill deferred. Mr. Speaker, uh, the next bill is CP number 20-256 for second reading. CP number or functional bill number 20-256. It's a bill for an act to amend title section or section 129A of title 55 of the Code of the Federal States of Micronesia as annotated, as amended, and as enacted by Public Law number 20-138 to specify reporting requirements for the administrator of the FSM Trust Fund and for other purposes. Okay, Chairman Figueroa. Move for the passage of the bill on second and final reading. It's more than seconded that Congress pass on second and final reading, CP number 20-256. Discussion, short recess, subject to go out the chair. Congress is back in session. Uh, we're still on discussion of uh, bill number 20-256. Any uh, further discussion? If none, if there is no objection, discussion is closed. So let's vote by roll call of delegations. Mr. Clerk. Uh, Mrs. Speaker, um, State of Chu, Chairman Aritos. State of Pompey, Chairman Panuelo. Goodbye. State of Kushai, Chairman Wally. Yes. 
state of yeah, Chairman Figueroa. Mr. Speaker, three states voted for, state of yeah, voted against. Okay, for that reason, CP number 20-256 has passed Congress on second and final reading. Short reason, subject to call of the chair. Congress back in session, next bill. Mr. Speaker, we have CP number 20-257 for second reading. CB number 20-257 is a bill for an act to amend section 117 of title 52 of the code of the Federal States of Micronesia as <coughs> annotated as amended to exempt the assistant chief clerk of Congress and the technology administrator from the Public Service System Act to make a technical amendment to the title of the position of the chief clerk of Congress and for other purposes. Speaker. Move for passage on the state bill on the second reading. Second. It's moved and seconded that Congress pass CP number 20-257 on second and final reading. Discussion. Speaker. Uh, for Leader Harbor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> I have a uh, oral amendment to make. Uh, to the bill, but before I do it, I'd like to uh, uh, make a motion that the rule that requires read an amendment on second reading would be suspended. It's more than seconded that uh, relevant rules, specifically the rules prohibiting substantive amendments on second and final reading, be suspended, and that rule uh, requiring written uh, amendments also be suspended. Those in favor of the motion say yes. Opposed nay. Motion carried. The relevant rules are now suspended. Pro leader, continue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, uh, in the title, on line, line three, where it says, uh, Federated States of Micronesia, uh, blah, 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 to exempt the assistant chief clerk of Congress, then put in a comma there, and then delete the word and. Then it goes further to say the technology administrator, and after the word administrator, insert and secretary to the floor leader, and then continue from the continue to say from the Public Service System Act. On page two, on line three, oh, sorry, on line two, uh, after the word uh, chief clerk, uh, insert, insert a comma there and delete the word and. And on line three, after the word Congress, uh, where uh, there is that uh, semicolon, uh, instead of that semicolon, put in comma and insert and and secretary and secretary to the floor leader uh, semicolon, and there is will come as they are. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it's more than seconded that the offered oral amendments by from Leader Arbor to CP 20-257 be adopted. Discussion, short reason, subject to call the chair. We're back in session, we're still on discussion of the offered oral amendments by uh, Floor Leader Harbor. Speaker. Any discussion? Uh, Floor Leader Harbor, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the reason why I'm putting the position of secretary to the floor leader is that first I believe that it's kind of uh, unfair and unjust for the uh, two secretaries' uh, positions for uh, speaker and vice speaker to be on exempt status while the uh, secretary to the floor leader is on the public service system. Uh, the reason why I feel that it's unfair is that because uh, these three positions are 
uh, falling under one category which I would say uh, secretaries of the presiders and you know it kind of look uh, bad as I see when the, spe uh, the secretary of the uh, speaker and vice speaker are exempt while my secretary is not. So that's one reason why I put in there. And the uh, other reason is, uh, is that I want to prevent the person holding the uh, secretary to the floor leader uh, from thinking that uh, this Congress is playing uh, discrimination against her and uh, probably might think that we have some kind of hatred toward her. And uh, third, I just want to remind the uh, members that of course, I know the reason why we want to put uh, employees on exempt status is to avoid uh, the public ser service system when we want to raise uh, the salary of our employees. Uh, but I want to assure the members that this raising of uh, salary for employees who are uh, under exempt status is not automatic. Yeah, it, it rests with the uh, supervisor or the head of the branch or department to raise uh, the salaries of their employees uh, even if they are under uh, exempt status. So uh, when we uh, turn this one particular position into uh, our under exempt status, it doesn't mean that the person holding the position will automatically get a raise. Uh, as I said, it will be under the discretion of the speaker when he feels like raising salary of an employee. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Florida Harper, for your candidness. Uh, I mean, that, that's, uh, that's fair enough. Okay, uh, any further discussion on the uh, third oral amendments? If none, if there is no objection, discussion is closed, so let's vote. Those in favor of the third oral amendments uh, to CP 20-257 by uh, for the driver, say yes. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. The offered uh, oral amendments are adopted. We now have CT1. Short recess. Subject to call of the chair. Congress is back in session. We're still on discussion of uh, Bill number 20-257, CT1. Chairman Wally. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I have a floor amendment that I wish to offer to the state bill, CP number 257. Okay. Uh, it's included in today's package uh, for members and distributed. So I would ask Chief Clerk to read this amendment, please. Chief Clerk. Read it, read it in today. Yes, Mr. Speaker, uh, we have a uh, floor amendment to CP number 20-257, CD1. The amendment reads, item one on page one, line three of the title. After the word Congress, insert Congress protocol and information officer, comma, Secretary to the Legislative Council. Item two of the amendment on page two, line two. After the word clerk, insert a, insert, com, insert Congress protocol and information officer, comma, Secretary to the Legislative Council. Okay, uh, there you have it. Make a motion. So move for its adoption. Mm -hmm. Move and seconded that the advert or amendments to CP20-257 CT1 by Chairman Willey be adopted. Discussion? If no discussion, let's vote. Those in favor of the adoption of the oral amendments uh, say yes. Opposed nay. Motion carried. The advert or amendments are adopted. We now have CT2. Any further discussion? Questions being called for, there is no objection. Discussion is closed, so let's vote by roll call of uh, delegations. Chief Clerk. State of Chuck, Chairman Aritos. State of Pompeii, Chairman Penuelo. Hey, 
State of Koshai, German Wally. State of Yap, German Fagir. Mrs. Mr. Speaker, all the four states for the four. For that reason, CP number 20-257, CT2 has passed Congress on second and final reading. Next bill. Mr. Speaker, we have CP number 20-266 for second reading. Uh, CB number 20-266 is a bill for an act to further amend public law number 20-125 as amended by public law number 20-135 by amending section 5 thereof for the purpose of changing the use of certain funds previously appropriated therein to fund public projects and social programs for the people of the state of Chuk and for other purposes. Short is subject to go off the chair. Congress is back in session. Uh, Chairman Fakir, make your motion for passage. Who for the passage of the said bill on second and final reading? Second. second. It's moved and seconded that Congress pass CP number 20-266 on second and final reading. Discussion. Senator Nett. Thank you, Speaker. I, I have a written amendment that I wish to offer. Proceed. So move for the adoption of the written amendment. Okay, it's moved and seconded that uh, Congress adopt the offer for amendments to CB 20-266 uh, as offered by uh, Senator Nett. Because of its length, we will dispense with its reading and the relevant rules, specifically uh, that require uh, prohibiting substantive amendments on second and final reading is still suspended. So, discussion on the offered amendments. Mr. Speaker. Discussion. <coughs> uh, yes. I wish to make an oral speaker. amendment to the offered amendment by yes, Senator proceed. Nez. On the third page, item Q, where it says Louis Bridge Pavement, and insert, delete that and insert uh, Ayrke New Road. You get that? I so move. It's moved and seconded that the offered or amendments to the uh, four amendments be adopted. Discussion? Any discussion? If none, there's no objection. Discussion is closed. So let's vote on the offered oral amendments by Vice Speaker Moses. Those in favor say yes. Yes. Opposed no. Motion carried. The offered oral amendments by Vice Speaker Moses are adopted. Uh, we're still on the uh, offer for amendments by Senator Ned as amended. Any further discussion on that? If none, there's no objection. Discussion is closed on the offer for amendments by Senator Ned. So let's vote. Those in favor say yes. Opposed no. Motion carried. The offered floor amendments to CB 20-266 as amended are adopted. We now have CD1. Mr. Speaker. Okay. Any further discussion on the bill, CD1? Mr. Speaker. Senator Coleman. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I also have an oral amendment I wish to offer to the said bill. Proceed. Thank you. On page 4, 919, letter N, current and prior application, delete that and insert fishing project, and the amount uh, of 20, reduce it down to 15,000. Uh, furthermore, uh, under Letter 22, grade letter R, and insert land transportation in the amount of 5,000. So move. It's moved and seconded. The offered oral amendments by Senator Kornman to CB 20-266 CD1 be adopted. Uh, the relevant rules are still suspended up to this point. So, any discussion? 
No discussion. There's no objection. Discussion is closed. So let's vote. Those in favor of the offered oral amendments by uh, Senator Kunman, say yes. Votes nay. Motion carried. The offered oral amendments by Senator Kunman are adopted. We now have CD2. Any further discussion? Questions we call for. There's no objection. Discussion is closed. So let's vote on the passage of CP number 20-266 CD2. Chief Clerk, roll call. State of Truth, Chairman Aritos. State of Pompey, Chairman Panuelo. Amen. State of Kushai, Chairman Wally. State of uh, Yap, Chairman Figuer. Mr. Speaker, all the four states voted in favor. CB number 20-266 CD2 has passed Congress on second and final reading. Next bill. Mr. Speaker, we have uh, CP number 20-259 CD1 for second reading. Uh, CP number 20-259 CD1, it's a bill for an act to appropriate the sum of $170,000 from the General Fund of the Federal States of Micronesia for the fiscal year ending September 30, 2019, for the purpose of funding relief efforts in the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands due to damage caused by Typhoon U2 and for other purposes. Gentlemen, forget Move for the passage of the bill on second and final reading. It's moved and seconded that Congress pass on second and final reading CB number 20-259 CD1. Discussion? Any discussion? Questions being called for? If there's no objection, discussion is closed. So let's vote by roll call of delegations. Chief Clerk. State of Chief, Chairman Aritos. State of Pompey, Chairman Panuelo. Yemai. State of Kushai, Chairman Wally. State of Yap, Chairman Figuer. Mr. Speaker, all the four states voted uh, in favor. Okay, for that reason, CB number 20-259, CD1 has passed Congress on second and final reading. For the information of our students, uh, this bill is our assistance to the uh, Commonwealth of Northern Mariana Islands, which was devastated by uh, two uh, typhoons. So this is our help to them as a gesture of our neighborly friendship with them, okay? All right, next bill. Mr. Speaker, we have CB number 20-267 for a second reading. CB number 20-267 is a bill for an act to amend section nine of public law number 20-42 as amended by public laws numbers 20 20-54, 20-64, 20-67, 20-83, 20-94, 20-103, and 20-122 to change the use of certain CIP line items in the fiscal year 2000, I mean fiscal year 18 budget act in order to provide for AIP matching funds and for other purposes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Move yeah. for the passage of the third bill on second and final reading. It's moved and seconded that Congress pass on second and final reading CP number 20-267. Discussion? Any discussion? Questions we call for? There is no objection. Discussion is uh, closed. So let's vote by roll call of delegations. Chief State of Chuk, uh, Chairman Aritos. State of Pompey, Chairman Panuelo. Amen. State of Kushai, Chairman Wally. State of Yap, Chairman Figuer. Mr. Speaker, all the four states voted in favor. CP number 20-267 has passed Congress on second and final reading. Next bill. 
Mr. Speaker, we have Functional Act Number 20-139 from your committee on chain. Go for a repassage. Okay. Chairman Dramalo. So resist. Short resist, subject to call of the chair. Congress is back in session. Chairman Dramalo, you have the floor. I take the word from the gentlemen, and I hope they are abide by their word and will defer this action to tomorrow's lesson. Thank you. Second. It's moved and seconded that our action on the veto uh, measure be deferred to tomorrow. Those in favor of the motion say yes. Opposed no. Motion carried. So the repassage motion is deferred to tomorrow. Chairman Figure. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If there are no more bills for action, uh, I, I just wish to inform members of my consultation with uh, the chairman of uh, R&D and JNGO and has agreed that I withdraw a bill, a very important bill that is pending in our bill calendar to uh, put on the bill calendar for action. So if I may, uh, I move that uh, Congress Bill number 20 uh be uh, withdrawn uh, from the two committees and be put on the bill calendar for action. Second. Short recess. Uh, Congress is back in session. There is a motion for passage of CP number 20 2660, which is uh, which was seconded. Uh, discussion. Speaker. Yes, uh, for Leader Harbor. Yeah, I just want to ask if there is a provision in the bill uh, relating to the uh, salary of the uh, secretary of that uh, department. Because before it used to be a director. Now that he's elevated to a secretary position, uh, I'm curious whether his salary is also going up. That's a very good question because when you amended the other bill to include your secretary, I was thinking about that. Uh, but uh, this your question has been addressed in a different law when we amended the the law, the, the title. I'm not sure of the number to uh, change that OEM office to the Department of OEM. The salary is also again uh, reflected in another uh, law. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? If Question. not, if there is no objection, no discussion is closed. So let's vote. This is first reading. And Chipper, roll call of members. Senator Alec. Senator Aritos. Senator Figueir, Senator Coland, Floor Leader Harper, Senator Conman, Vice Speaker Moses, Senator Ned, Senator Panuelo, Amy. Senator Perman, Aye. Senator Romulo, Senator Ursmal, Senator Wally. Speaker Simina? Yes. Mr. Speaker, 12 members voted in favor. CB number 20 260 has passed Congress on first reading. For information of our students, what we just did, voted on first reading. That's the first round of voting. And all members get to vote. Okay? All right. Next. Mr. Speaker, short recess, please. Short recess, subject to call of the chair. Session, uh, Senator Conman, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I move to withdraw uh, CP number 20 268 to uh, order of business for today's action. So move. Second. It's moved and seconded that CP number 20-268 be withdrawn from committee and placed on the bill counter for first reading action. The relevant rules are still suspended up to this point. So those in favor of the motion say yes. Yes. Was no. Motion carried. Said bill is now placed on the bill calendar for first reading action. 
Chairman Figueroa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move for the passage of the third bill on second and on first reading. Second. It's moved and seconded that Congress pass on first reading CP number 20-268. Discussion. Any discussion? Question. Okay. No discussion. There is no objection. Can we just read the title? Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, my apologies for that. Uh, Chief Kirk, read the title. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Speaker, uh, CB number 20-268, it's a bill for an act to further amend public law number 20-60 as amended by public laws numbers 20-65, 20-75, 20-85, and 20-97 by amending section 5 thereof to change the use of funds previously appropriated therein to fund public projects and social programs in the state of Chuk and for other purposes. Okay, there you have it. Uh, discussion? Any discussion? If none, if there's no objection, discussion is closed. So let's vote by roll call of members. First reading. Senator Alec, Senator Aritos, Senator Figuer, Senator Goland, Floor Leader Harper, Senator Conman, Vice Speaker Moses, Senator Ned, Senator Panuelo, Senator Perman, hey. Senator Romolo, Senator Orismao, Senator Welly, Speaker Simina, Mr. Speaker, 12 members, 44. CP number 20-268 has passed Congress on first reading. Next bill. Speaker. Speaker. Uh, yeah. Chairman. Chairman Berman. Yeah, thank you, Speaker. If I may not be out of order, can we move back up to standing committee report? If there is no objection, we will now go back to the standing committee report calendar. Okay. Next report. Mr. Speaker. Go ahead, Chairman. Yeah, thank you, Mr. I have consulted with the uh, Chairman of JNCO and um, he's given me the thumbs up. So I make a motion to withdraw and place Standing Committee Report 20 104. <clears throat> it's moved and seconded that Standing Committee Report number 20 104 be placed on the Standing Committee Report calendar for action. Those in favor of that motion say yes. Opposed nay. Motion carried. Standing Committee Report number 20-104 is now placed on the Standing Committee Report calendar for action. Chairman Romolo. I defer to Chairman Perman. Chairman Perman, you have the floor. Motion for its adoption. It's moved and seconded that Congress adopt standing committee report number 20-104. Discussion? Any discussion? If no discussion, there's no objection. Debate is closed. So let's vote. Those in favor of the adoption of standing committee report number 20-104, say yes. Opposed, no. Motion carried. Standing committee report number 20-104 is adopted by Congress. Next report, Chief Clerk. Fair enough, Mr. Speaker. Okay. Speaker. Chairman Fikir. I um, move to place uh, Congress Bill number 20 as 256 on the bill calendar for action. Okay. Uh, we will, uh, if there's no objection, we will go back down to the bill calendar. If there's no objection, we are now on the bill calendar. Uh, quiet, uh, Chairman Fikir. To repeat the motion, I move that we place uh, Congress Bill 20-256 on the bill calendar for action. Short recess, subject to call of the chair. Session, restate your motion, uh, correct number of the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move to place Congress Bill number 20-25. 20, uh, 
on the second, bill it's moved and seconded that Congress pass, I mean, that uh, CP number 20-258 be withdrawn from committee and placed on the bill calendar for first reading action. Those in favor of that motion say yes. Post nay. Motion carried. CP number 20-258 is now placed on the bill calendar for first reading action. Chairman Figueroa, motion for passage. I move that Congress pass on first reading Congress bill number 20-258. Second. It's moved and seconded that Congress pass on first reading CP number 20-258. Read the title, uh, Chief Clerk. Mr. Speaker, we have 20 uh, or CP number 20 258. This is a bill for an act to amend section 107 of Title I of the Code of the Federal States of Micronesia, as annotated, for the purpose of prohibiting discrimination based on sexual orientation and for other purposes. There you have it. The discussion. Question. Speaker. Okay, Floor Leader Herbert. Uh, I do support the intent of the bill, but I just want to ask whether there has been any discrimination in that uh, area. Chairman Fakir, you care to enlighten our. I, I have order? not uh, heard any discrimination, but we don't need to wait until that time when the issue comes up. I think we need to be prepared in advance and reaffirm uh, the intent of our Constitution that we don't discriminate against anyone regardless of whatever. So that's why we need to do this. We don't need to wait until that. I think we need to have this on, in our books, in our uh, book and, uh, and so that people know what we are, that we are a very friendly nation and we uh, treat our fellow human beings just as we, we treat ourselves. Is that clear enough, uh, Florida Harbor? Yeah, thank you, but uh, I think we have already have uh, many other laws that are also enforcing that one. Uh, with respect to gender, but with sexual orientation, not yet. That's why we have this law. Yes, it's a different, uh, there's a distinction between gender and sexual orientation. Uh, short reasons. Short reasons, subject to call of the chair. And, uh, we're still on discussion of Bill 20-258. Question. Questions we call for, there's no objection. Discussion is closed. So let's vote by roll call of members this first reading. Chief Clerk. Senator Anuk, Senator Aritos, Senator Figueir, Senator Coland. Uh, because of the bill is allowing the transplant, yes. Floor Leader Harper. I believe in the Bible, not in the Constitution, no. <laughs> Senator Kuhnman. Senator Kuhnman. Senator Vice Speaker Moses. Senator Ned. Senator Panuelo. Hey, <coughs> Senator Perman. Yes. Senator Romolo. I believe in the Bible, but I will vote yes because of the gears of bill. <laughs> Senator Orsmail. Senator Wendy. Speaker Simina. Yes. Mr. Speaker, 10 members voted in favor. CB number 20-258 has passed Congress on first reading. Next bill. Bona privilege. Who, who's that? Yours truly. Okay, Chairman Romolo, you have uh, the floor. Thank you, Speaker. And I wish to again beg the indulgence of the Congress to recognize a very familiar face in the gallery this morning and no, no one else beside our 
very own election director, Tony Otto. I thought he resigned, but uh, okay. He's got his uh, hearing back. Okay. Speaker, uh, and also with uh, the director, we also have an also hardworking lady, the staff of that same office with the director, and I ask that we also give her a round of applause. Her name is Esme Panuelo. Okay, thank you, uh, Chairman Romolo, for introducing uh, our, now, our most important people. Yeah, they're taking care of uh, our re-election. Any uh, other point of privilege? If none, uh, short reasons subject to call of the chair. In session, uh, we're still on the bill calendar. Next bill, uh, Chief Clerk. Mr. Speaker, we have uh, CB number 20-246 for first reading from your committee on Django, attached to report 20-104. Uh, okay. This is the 7%. Uh, there you have it, uh, Chairman Romano. Tomorrow. I yield the floor to Chairman Ways and Means. Chairman, move, move, move to defer the uh, action on the bill. Uh, speaker. To the House speaker. Speaker. Chairman, permit. Can we do first reading today? Because if we're leaving tomorrow, there's. Short is a subject to call up the chair. Congress back in session. We're still on CP number 20-246-CD1. German permit. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Motion to defer action on the said bill to the next regular session. It's moved and seconded that uh, CP number 20-246-CD1 be deferred to the next session of the regular session of Congress. Those in favor of that motion say yes. A vote no. Motion carried. Said bill is now deferred to the next regular session of Congress. Next bill. There are none, Mr. Speaker. Okay, if there is no further bill uh, for action, let's go down to the resolution calendar. First resolution. Speaker. Speaker. Chief Kirk, do we have any resolution? There are none. Speaker. Okay. Speaker. Speaker. Chairman Cullen first, then Romolo next. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I move to withdraw uh, resolution 20-149 on the order of business for action. So move, Mr. Speaker. It's moved and seconded that resolution number 20-149 be withdrawn from committee and place on the resolution calendar for action. Short recess, subject to call of the chair. Congress is back in session. Uh, we're on resolution number 20-149. Motion for uh, adoption. Chairman. Yes, that's for placement. Speaker. Motion for adopt said resolution. It's moved and seconded that Congress adopt resolution number 20-149. Read the title. Chief Clerk. You want me to read the title? Please. Okay. Mr. Speaker, uh, CR number 20-149, it's a resolution to confirm the nomination of Mr. Matthias Lawrence to serve as a member of the Telecommunication Regula Regulation Authority of the Federal States of Micronesia. Okay. Uh, there you have a discussion. Any discussion? If none, if there is no objection, Discussion is closed. We need to fill that position. It's uh, very important, critical for our uh, regulatory authority to move forward. So let's, uh, that's a nomination, so secret ballot and at least 10 votes. Uh, Chief, Chief Clerk, and all the ballots, short reasons. Chris is back in session. Uh, Chief Clerk, announce the results. Uh, Mr. Speaker, 11 members voted for, one against. Uh, Alec and Orsman excused. Okay, for that reason, uh, CR number 20-149 has been adopted, is adopted by Congress. Mr. Lawrence is uh, now confirmed as a member of the 
Telecommunication Regulation Authority. Let's give him a round of applause. Okay. Next resolution. Mr. Speaker, we have motion of resolution number 20-150 uh, for adoption. Uh, CR number 20-150 is a resolution to confirm the nomination of Mr. Tulunshru Iwakuk to serve as a member of the Board of Regents for the College of Micronesia, Federated States of Micronesia, representing the state of Kushai. Short reasons. Short reasons. Subject to call the chair. Back in session, the floor leader, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move to uh, withdraw uh, and place the follow uh, place on resolution calendar for today the following resolution. Uh, 120 139 150 154. I so move. Second. It's moved and seconded that the uh, following resolutions 20 139, 20 150, and 20 154 be withdrawn from committee and placed on the resolution calendar for action. Those in favor of that motion say yes. Opposed no. Motion carried. Those resolutions, three resolutions, are now uh, withdrawn and placed on the resolution calendar for action. Short recess, subject to call of the chair. Back in session, uh, Chief Clerk. Uh, Mr. Speaker, my apologies. Um, the next resolution is functional resolution number 20-139 for adoption. CR number 20-139 is a resolution Approving and accepting a grant or accepting a non-project grant aid from the government of Japan in the in the amount of 200 million Japanese yen to the government of the Federal States of Micronesia for the promotion of economic and social development programs, including all the terms and conditions of the assistance. Speaker. Okay. Uh, Move for adoption of the set uh, resolution. Second. Okay. It's moved and seconded that Congress adopt resolution number 20 139. Discussion. Speaker. Chairman Fakir. Thank you, Speaker. Do we know the details uh, or breakdown of the, the grant and how much is in uh, dollar? Okay, Chairman Panuela, care to... Speaker, thank you. Your our, our R&D committee had the uh, uh, hearing this morning with the uh, R&D and uh, Foreign Affairs Departments and AG. The, the communication from the President came in at the latter end of our session last uh, uh, September, and so your committee didn't act on it. Uh, and now it's a short session, so we're, we're trying to, uh, to adopt. Uh, based on information that was received, uh, this money will be divided between the uh, four states. Uh, it's a grant that was executed during the margins of the Palm Summit in Japan. Uh, exchange of notes have been signed with our Department of Foreign Affairs. And uh, based on testimony, this is to help procure equipment and supplies uh, to help disaster prevention and preparedness. Uh, that's the information we received, uh, and then uh, based on that, uh, the money will be divided between the states, uh, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, uh, Chairman uh, Panuelo. Is that uh, okay, uh, clear enough to you? Uh? On uh, the amount, I believe it's close to 1.8 million, uh, just looking at the current exchange rate with the yen, uh, just short of 1.8 million, I believe. Okay, so that's a lot of money split four ways, equally. Okay, speaker. No, I'm just curious uh, how the uh, the money is going to be divided. I recall in the past uh, the this kind of grant. Uh, I think it falls under the uh, small scale uh, scheme uh, project. Uh, was divided among the five governments. There was a, last time there was a share, I think, or previous share of the national government. I'm just uh, wishing and hoping that in the future, when they send this kind of a, a grant uh, to Congress for approval, they should give us the detailed use of it, because at some point we're going to be accountable 
for some of these uh, rents. Uh, and this is where I'm coming from. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Figueroa. I'm sure there is uh, written papers uh, somewhere, you know, itemizing or allocating the uh, money uh, to the four states. Of course, uh, for the national government, we can uh, give up our share to uh, share with our states who are in, uh, in need. And uh, any further discussion? If none, there's no objection. Uh, debate is closed. So let's vote those in favor of the adoption of resolution number 20-139. Say yes. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Resolution number 20-139 is adopted by Congress. Next resolution. Mr. Speaker, we have motion of resolution number 20-150 for adoption, CR number 20-150. It's a resolution to confirm the nomination of Mr. Tolonstro E. Wakuk to serve as a member of the Board of Regents of the College of Micronesia, Federal States of Micronesia, representing the state of Kushai. Okay. So move for the adoption sure. of the resolution. Okay, it's moved and seconded that Congress adopt resolution number 20-150. Discussion. Speaker. Any discussion? Yes, uh, Florida. Uh, yeah, I just want to ask uh, honorable members to kindly support the nomination of this individual because I don't want us to follow the path of our COM, uh, which doesn't recognize all our PhD degrees. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Lord Leader. Any further discussion? If none, there's no objection. We will now vote. And it's a nomination, so by secret ballot, and it requires at least 10 votes. Chief Clerk, hand out the ballots. Short recess. Congress is back in session. Uh, Chief Clerk, announce the result. Mr. Speaker, we got 11 members voted in affirmative. Okay, for that reason, resolution number 20-150 is adopted by Congress. Uh, Mr. Wakuk is now confirmed as a member of the Board of Regents. Let's give him a... Okay, next resolution. Mr. Speaker, we have a constitutional resolution number 20-154 for adoption. CR number 20-154 is a resolution to confirm the nomination of Mr. Yusto Lokobwe to serve as the FSM National Election Commissioner for Chuk State. German, Norman. Move for for passage on the resolution. Second. It's moved and seconded that Congress adopt resolution number 20 154. Any discussion? If none, Speaker. there's no. Yes, uh, Florida. Herbert. Just uh, for the information of uh, other members who are not uh, aware of what's going on in Chu, uh, our uh, election commissioner uh, is now resigning because of his health. So we really need uh, an immediate replacement in that position. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Florida Harbor, for the explanation. Okay, any further discussion? If none, there's no objection. Discussion will be closed. This is another nomination. Uh, and uh, we will need at least 10 votes and by secret ballot. Chief Clerk, distribute the ballots. Short reasons. Congress is back in session. Chief Clerk, announce the result. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, 10 members voted in favor, two against. Senators Ursmal and Alec excused. For that reason, uh, resolution number 20-154 is adopted by Congress. Uh, Mr. Justo Nogobwe is uh, confirmed to be the National Election Commissioner for uh, the state of Chuk. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Any, the next resolution is what? There are none, Mr. Speaker. Okay, we're done with the resolutions. Let's, uh, Decide what to do. Okay. 
Next item, Jeffrey. Item 20, introduction of bills and resolutions. If you have any measure to introduce, please pass them on to Jeffrey. Next item. Item 21, miscellaneous communications, none, Mr. Speaker. Next item. Item 22, miscellaneous business. Do you have any miscellaneous business? Gentlemen, if none, announcement. Chairman, only. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. No announcement. Okay, thank you. Chairman, figure. No announcement. <coughs> Vice Chairman, net. Thank you, Speaker. We're, we're having a meeting with uh, the election director in the lounge for any question that any member would like to ask. Okay, so take note. Whoever have problem with him is welcome to attend. We all have problems with him. <laughs> okay, uh, take note, members of that meeting with the uh, election uh, director. Chairman uh, Berman. No announcement from HSA. Okay, you have a lot of uh, resolutions still. That's going to be tomorrow. Okay, thank you, uh, Chairman uh, Aridus. Chairman Panuelo. Speaker, no announcement. Chairman uh, Golan. No announcement, thank you. Vice Chairman Foreman. No announcement, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Okay, Vice Speaker Moses, you have any announcement? Okay, if not, uh, floor leader, uh, announcement and uh, your motion. Thank you, Speaker. No announcement, but I move that we stand in recess and come back at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Second. It's moved and seconded that Congress stand in recess until tomorrow at 10 in the morning. Those in favor say yes. Opposed, no. Motion carried. Congress now stands in recess until tomorrow at 10 in the morning.